The president and first lady testing positive for coronavirus. Today, reaction from Washington as we speak with Indiana Congressman Dr. Larry Bouchon, plus Senator Mike Braun and former Senator Joe Donnelly on the presidential debate and the Supreme Court showdown. And Governor Eric Holcomb and his opponent Woody Myers on the state's fight against COVID-19. It's all ahead this Sunday in Focus. It's one of 2020's defining moments. The president of the United States being taken to Walter Reed Medical Center Friday after testing positive for the coronavirus. I want to thank everybody for the tremendous support. I'm going to Walter Reed Hospital. I think I'm doing very well. Another dramatic development in this very unusual election year. Good morning. I'm Dan Spieler, joined by Washington correspondent Trevor Shirley today. Trevor, with the president and first lady testing positive for coronavirus. What is the reaction there in Washington? Well, Dan, good morning. Thanks for having me. Obviously, there's a lot of concern here in Washington because so many people, both on Capitol Hill and at the White House, have had so much direct personal contact with the president over the past week. I mean, look at the events that he's had, everything from the nomination ceremony of Amy Coney Barrett last weekend to the debate earlier this week, uh, to the rallies and the private fundraiser, not to mention just the day-to-day -day interactions at the White House. I mean, there is a long, long list of at this point of people here in Washington and outside the district who have directly interacted with the president who are now concerned about their own health. As we know with this disease, things can change pretty quickly. So as the campaign looks ahead, they're going to be figuring out in all likelihood day to day what the president is able to do in terms of the debates. Uh, we're not sure about that at this point. The next presidential debate is scheduled for October 15th. So there are uh, October 15th. So there are still a lot of questions out there about what the next two, even three weeks could look like. Now, another concern is that question of continuity of government. The good news is there is always a continuity of government plan in place. It's not like a diagnosis like this comes up or something happens and the leaders of the government are running around trying to figure out what do we do next. There, in theory, is always a plan in place. And a lot of that comes down to, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, just how the president's doing. As long as the president is healthy enough to carry out his daily duties, nothing will change, at least as far as most Americans will be able to tell. Right. But if we get to a point where the president, regardless of who that is, isn't able to carry out his abilities, then there will be a serious yeah. discussion about when to pass over those responsibilities to the vice president. Certainly uh, everyone there in Washington hoping that he recovers quickly. Trevor Shirley reporting there in Washington. Trevor, thanks. I also spoke this week with two Indiana lawmakers, Congressman Jim Banks and Congressman Larry Bouchon, who's also a doctor. Well, first of all, my thoughts and prayers are with the president and the first lady, and honestly with all citizens of the United States who have been stricken with COVID-19, as well as their families. You know, we've lost over 200,000 of our fellow citizens. So, you know, my thoughts and prayers are with the president and with the first lady and anyone who has been afflicted with COVID-19. Do you think this will serve a as a lesson either for those in Washington or just generally for people around the country who maybe haven't been taking this seriously, who maybe haven't been wearing a mask out in public? Will this, should this serve uh, as a lesson? You're also a doctor. What are your thoughts in mm -hmm. terms of the broader significance of what this might mean in the fight against coronavirus? Yeah, well, yeah, I, I, I think it's a great question. I think that it, it shows that uh, the COVID-19 virus is very contagious. You know, the president is in an environment where uh, everyone around him is tested, uh, except when he's, you know, out in the public. And even when he's been at public events, he's been distanced from uh, citizens at rallies and, and things like that. But yeah, there are some people who don't take this very seriously. And let me just tell you as a physician, this is serious. We've had 200,000, over 200,000 deaths, people with very serious illnesses. Some people may have chronic conditions in their lungs related to this. So, you know, when the president of the United States uh, in, in an environment where everyone around him is tested and where everyone for the most part is socially distanced uh, can get it, then it can happen to anyone. I, I, I hope that uh, there are people out there who weren't taking it seriously now that will look at this and take this for what it is. It's a worldwide pandemic. 
uh, and it's a dangerous virus uh, that needs to be taken seriously. We did see video, though, of, of a lot of lawmakers, Notre Dame's president not wearing a mask at the uh, Barrett announcement last weekend. In retrospect, should the White House ha have been doing things differently? Should the president have gone to a, a fundraiser in New Jersey the day after learning that Hope Hicks had tested positive? Yeah, I mean, I, th I do think there, you know, there are some things that could have been done better, of course. You know, and at this point, we don't know exactly how the virus spreads, but masks help with the droplets and larger particles, like if you sneeze or if you cough or if you're talking or singing even. Um, but, we, you know, it also possibly spreads by uh, aerosolizing. What that means is, for example, if you walk into a room where someone's been smoking a cigarette, and they're not actively smoking. You don't see any smoke, but you can still smell it. So right. it's kind of aerosolized. But a mask uh, and distancing uh, definitely helps. And I do think there are some things around the president that could have been done uh, better. Yeah, it was probably only a matter of time. Um, obviously, our thoughts and prayers go out to the president and the first lady, others who have tested positive. The president comes in contact with a lot of people. And in spite of taking a number of precautions, um, I'm not surprised that ultimately that this happened. Um, but we, we hold them up. The president's a fighter, first and foremost. I have no doubt he'll get through it, and he'll get through it quickly. Uh, but we know a lot more about COVID-19 today than we did six months ago. So there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic that the president and the first lady will, will get through this very, very, very soon. But all we can do as citizens is follow the recommendations of the CDC, uh, which change based on new information. Um, and protect our vulnerable populations like our elderly and people with immunosuppressive diseases. Um, and then the bottom line is here is we have to have a vaccine uh, to this virus before we can really get ourselves out of this pandemic. More reaction Friday from Indiana Congressman Andre Carson, who said, quote, I'm praying for President Trump, the first lady and everyone battling COVID-19. This virus is extremely serious and we are all at risk. Also Friday, our affiliate in Michigan spoke one on one with presidential candidate Joe Biden. Thank God uh, both my wife and I are negative. And uh, but I feel I genuinely feel badly for the president. I hope to God that this is something that he'll he and his wife will be able to tolerate and get through without any lasting impact on him. Now, the two remaining presidential debates are scheduled for October 15th and 22nd. We'll see what happens. This coming Wednesday is the vice presidential debate. Also in Washington, there are concerns on Capitol Hill about potential exposure. Senator Mike Lee of Utah, Senator Tom Tillis of North Carolina, and Notre Dame President Father John Jenkins testing positive after last week's announcement, last weekend's announcement on the president's Supreme Court nominee, Amy Coney Barrett. She tested negative on Friday. 